Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 Microbiology Buzzwords Part 4. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the other videos in this series. As always, this information is high yield for USMLE Step 1 as well as Comlex Level 1, and the information may vary slightly depending on the resources that you're using. That being said, let's jump right into it. Motile pear-shaped organisms. This is going to be buzzwords for trichomonas. This is going to be the description of trichomonas, so you want to know that. You want to know the shape of the organism as well. Second leading cause of UTI, I think most of us know that the first leading cause, the most common cause of a UTI is E. coli, but we also want to know the second leading cause, and that's going to be Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Really important to know that. A bacteria that produces a red pigment, this is going to be Serratia marcesans. This is a common organism. It's associated with drug-resistant UTIs in healthcare-associated areas, so hospitals, nursing homes, those kinds of things. Uh, you may also commonly know it. It is that organism that kind of forms that reddish-pinkish film on the bottom of your bathtub. That's Serratia. Doesn't normally affect uh, immunocompetent people, but it can be very deadly for immunocompromised people causing drug-resistant UTIs. Here's another one, AIDS plus a brain abscess. If you're seeing this, you want to immediately be thinking about toxoplasma. Remember, this is one of those AIDS-defining illnesses. When the CD4 count drops below 100, you're at an increased risk of this. So if you have an AIDS patient and they have a brain abscess, you want to be thinking about toxoplasma. Diarrhea plus a protozoa, there's really two main organisms that you need to know here. It's going to be Giardia, Giardiasis, I think most of us know that one. But the less common one that you also need to be having in your mind is going to be Cryptosporidium, if you see diarrhea and a protozoal organism. Raw honey, hopefully most of us know this, we need to stay away from raw honey in newborns. It's going to be because of the Clostridium botulinum, that's the association that you want to know there. Diarrhea plus daycare, this is a common one, we need to know this as well. This is going to be Yersinia enterocolitica. Remember, Remember, we've talked about Yersinia enterocolitica before. It is the cause of pseudoappendicitis, that infection that can mimic appendicitis with that right lower quadrant pain. I've talked about that in previous microbiology buzzwords videos. I will link that right here just to make sure that you review all of those as well. Soft cheeses, the association with a microbe that we need to make here is going to be Listeria monocytogenes. Next one is an S-shaped organism. They love to ask these different organisms how they appear, what shapes they have, those kinds of things. An S-shaped organism is going to be Campylobacter. Bacter. And here's going to be a visual stimulus. As you can see here, especially this one right in the center, kind of has like that S shape that you can note, a couple of these on the sides as well. We're actually looking at this under a scanning electron microscopy. The important thing to note here, this is not twisted like a spirochete would be, as we've talked about in previous videos as well. Definitely make sure to watch those, but this doesn't have a twisting or a corkscrew shape. It's kind of just bent in the shape of an S. So that is a really important way to differentiate Campylobacter from other organisms, those other spirochetes. Raw or undercooked seafood, this can be a couple different things, but the big organism that you need to know is going to be Vibrio. More specifically, it's going to be Vibrio. Vibrio parahemolyticus and Vibrio vulnificus. Note this is not Vibrio cholera, that is different. Raw or undercooked seafood, you want to be thinking Vibrio parahemolyticus or Vibrio vulnificus. Next one is going to be a raccoon bite, and if we see a raccoon bite, we want to be thinking about rabies virus. A lot of people, when they think about rabies, they think about bats and skunks and sometimes rabid dogs, but raccoons are also a source of rabies as well, so you want to know that for the exam. Joint swelling, if we see joint swelling on the exam, this may be a little bit tougher, but we need to associate this with a microorganism as well. And that buzzword is going to be for chikungunya virus, all right? This joint swelling, joint pain is going to be highly specific for chikungunya virus. This infection causes a lot more arthralgias, joint pain than something like dengue, hemorrhagic fever. So definitely be able to know that distinction. Joint swelling, we're thinking chikungunya virus. Squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder, the association that we need to make here is with the parasite Schistosoma hematobium, all right? There are some cancer-causing microbes that we need to know. This is one of them. If we're talking about bladder cancer, we're talking about Schistosoma hematobium. Black vomit, if you see this on the exam, if there's a description of this, you want to be thinking about yellow fever virus. I'm going to spare us a visual stimulus for this one, but just know black vomit, you want to be thinking yellow fever. A virus that can cause sterility, this is not a very common thing, so this is pretty unique to this organism. This is going to be mumps virus. Mumps virus can cause sterility in uh, males that it affects, especially after puberty. Giant cell pneumonia, this one's a little bit tough, but I think it's important to know as well. If you see giant cell pneumonia, any mention of this, you want to be thinking about measles, aka the rubiola virus. This is called giant cell pneumonia because there are these large 
phagocytic cells that infect the alveoli of the lungs. They're these giant cells. And if you see that association, if that's discussed, you want to be thinking about measles. And remember, measles is also called rubiola, not to be confused with rubella. Epidemic typhus, if you see this, the association to make is with rickettsia prowazeki. This is different from the rickettsia rickettsii that causes Rocky Mountain spotted fever. A little bit lower yield, but still important to know. Epidemic typhus is rickettsia prowazeki, and this can be transmitted by body lice. Next one, we have a monoclonal antibody, palavizumab. The association to make here is with a paramedic. Mixovirus. This monoclonal antibody, this drug palavizumab, is used to prevent pneumonia caused by RSV in premature infants. So you want to know that palavizumab is for premature infants to fight off paramyxovirus. Really important. Nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. This is important to know. They like to make associations between the different receptors and the viruses that they use. In this case, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is associated with the rabies virus. Periorbital edema, this can be a really common complication of infection with trichinella spiralis. Periorbital edema, we want to be thinking trichinella spiralis. All right, that was a quick one, but there was a lot of high-yield information in there, so be sure that you have all of that down in your mind. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you found use in this video, please leave me a like or a comment. Share my content with others that you think might find it useful, and be sure to subscribe to receive all of my high-yield USMLE and Comlex content. I'll see you in the next one.